So um, this is a sample of rubidium. It arrived just a couple of days ago from Alpha, the company. So there's one gram of rubidium. It costs about 65 pounds. It's one of the alkali metals, so it's very, very reactive. A bit like sodium, but perhaps a little bit more. So the, the metal itself is quite low melting. It won't melt with my hand though, unfortunately, so I'm not going to show you it liquid now. But you can see there's one gram of the, of the metal inside this glass ampule. It's very reactive, and um, we're going to explore its chemistry now by, by putting this into some water. Well, we've got this really neat device which Neil put together last Friday, and you can see it's, it's, it's got a hammer which is going to break the glass. Show us Neil, what does it do mate? So when the hammer falls, literally, we'll break the glass, the rubidium will just drop into the big bucket of water that we've got underneath. Rubidium is an alkali metal that comes between potassium and cesium. And both potassium and cesium are much better known among chemists than um, <coughs> rubidium. Potassium, because it's all over the world, the, the, the um, environment, you have potassium in cells and plants and so on, I mean biological cells. Um, rubidium on the other hand is quite rare. So I'm going to give the sample now to Neil, and Neil's going to load it, and then we're going to drop the hammer on it. There you go Neil. It was discovered originally by the um, German chemist Bunsen, or Bunsen as they, he was called, the one who invented the Bunsen burner, and he discovered it by looking at the colours that you see in flames when he was heating up um, water that came from, mineral water that came from springs somewhere in Germany I believe, or it may have been somewhere in Middle Europe. So Neil is arranging the sample of rubidium against the metallic back plate in the small metallic collider. Rubidium gives a characteristic colour that is different from lilac of um, sodium or, <coughs> I'm sorry, lilac of potassium or the orange of sodium. The rubidium is slightly more reactive than sodium. So when we did the sodium experiments we had our safety glasses and, and coat on. But for rubidium we're going to wear secondary goggles. So here's my safety goggles which I'm going to put on top. Don't we look good? Nowadays, one of the main uses of rubidium is actually in physics rather than in chemistry because you can heat up rubidium metal to a high temperature and get a vapour of rubidium atoms in a specially constructed heated cell. And you can get very interesting effects from um, shining very intense laser light into rubidium atoms and the rubidium atoms can do a whole series of different very elegant physics experiments. So rubidium has got a life of its own in physics, but in chemistry it's perhaps slightly neglected. <laughs> See that tube step. Was that it? Don't think I needed my safety screen. <laughs> well, that wasn't very exciting, was it? Should have been some in there. Yeah. There was, a, there was a gas tube at the bottom thing, it was bumping in the gas tube. It's all gone. You were right, it was just a fizzle. <laughs> <laughs> 